Hi and welcome to Project Marlin. Um, my apologies for not doing a, another video sooner. It's been one thing or another where the way things are in the world at the moment quite difficult um, and also uh, I've been quite busy with work as well so getting out to the truck has been uh, a little difficult. Um, before anybody comments that I shouldn't be here um, I will just point out I'm on the way back from a job. Uh, it is the weekend and there's nobody else here. Uh, it's all shut up and it is uh, only a very, very brief stop off. Um, we're really just going to do a, a quick, well, say a quick, we're going to do a bit of a question and answers um, today. Uh, I've been asked quite a few questions about the truck, some in uh, on Facebook, some on video, some actually in person, people I know. I thought it'd be quite interesting just, to, or might be quite interesting for people just to, to do a bit of a, um, a run through. Some of these questions are actually really in response to comments that have been made as well. Um, I've got a few written down, uh, there's a few others in my head uh, that I'll probably forget before the end of the video. Um, but I think <laughs> one of the first questions that everyone asks is why? Um, and the honest answer is I was looking for um, a project. It was at a time in my life where I needed something to do. Um, just been made redundant, I've had a uh, bereavement with close family and I needed something to occupy myself. Um, so my plan was to find um, something along the lines of a, a Dennis RS, um, so a four wheeled normal fire engine. Um, in my scouring of the internet I accidentally fell across this old girl and um, it had price on application, so I thought, wow, it'd be lovely to have that. I read the spec at Detroit diesel engine, and oh, love the sound of a Detroit, beautiful sound. I'd love to own something with a Detroit. In. I ring the bloke up, it'll be too much money. So I rang him up, and we had a bit of a chat, and I explained my position, and it really was just a pipe dream. Uh, and he gave me a, a figure, and that figure was in the ballpark of what I thought I could buy an old fire engine for and I could spend doing it up and I could insure it, uh, do my licence and take it to shows this year, <laughs> um, all within that, that amount of money. Now I thought well that doesn't leave me any money to, to do anything with, we'll come back to that, but I thought I'll go and have a look at it, when I get there it's an old air fire engine. The foam is highly corrosive, um, it, or some of the foams are very corrosive, they, they tend to rust metal really badly. I thought the chassis is going to be rotted out, the engine is going to be absolutely knackered. Um, can't, I haven't got the facilities and uh, all the money to rebuild a V12 Detroit or to strip it down and completely redo a, a chassis on something like this. Um, so I drove halfway across the country, well all the way across the country, we're here in the southwest, not that far from Bristol, and I drove all the way across um, to Lakenheath and had a look at the truck, and the chassis was, was all really good. Uh, there's a couple of crusty spots on it when you look closely, but nothing that a needle scaler and a, a pot of paint won't, won't fix. Um, and it had no batteries on it, hadn't been fired up in 18 months, and they went and got a couple of boost packs, stuck the boost packs on there and she cranked over quite a bit. I mean bearing in mind this is November, it was quite a cold day, um, there'd been ice on the car um, at the hotel uh, which is about 10 minutes down the road so it was it was it was a cold morning and these thing, this, this thing doesn't have any heat start on it, it's got no glow plugs, no block heater, well it does have block heaters but they don't work and they need to be plugged into the mains, it doesn't have a grid heater, it's got no ether start on it and I know Detroit's when they've been sat can take a bit of cranking so she cranked over and cranked over and cranked over and all of a sudden she fired up and the second she fired up all the smoke from cranking pretty much cleared away and she didn't hunt and these things when these Detroits when they're, they're cold can when they're worn especially they can hunt quite badly this one didn't run perfectly level so I had to look around looked at other problems I thought oh dear I'm gonna have to buy this now I can't find the things I thought were going to be wrong with it um, aren't. I knew there was rust in the cab, but the cab's quite simple. 
Um, the rust is worse in the cab than I thought, but anyway, long story short, I bought it because it was different, had a Detroit in it, and um, I could suddenly afford something that I thought I'd never afford. I was expecting three figure sum for it, uh, three figure, six figure sum for it, um, potentially, but it wasn't. So anyway, um, I've rambled on there a little bit longer than I expected to. But right, now, this is a question that I've asked myself quite a few times. Who built it? Now, you can't see from this angle. Um, on some of the mud flaps, you can make out a logo, which is a world with a, a banner across it. And there's also the same logo on the side of the truck, which I think I've shown you before. And in fact, I'll try to clip a quick picture in um, here of it. Um, because it's the fire trucks logo. Now I've never heard of fire trucks. Obviously, I've heard of fire trucks, but not a company called fire trucks. Now it seems that when Chubb, who made a lot of airport fire engines in the I think the 60s, late 60s and the 70s, decided to stop making them, some of the guys that worked for Chubb um, went in with some of the people that were involved with Manchester Airport um, and decided to build. Uh, trucks that were, were based very similar, very, very much on the Chubb design, um, the early, early fire trucks trucks. Uh, in the late 80s, they decided they wanted to produce a, a modern truck, a modular truck. Um, so they produced this, which is the Marlin, and uh, they produced a, a, a new version of the Barracuda. And the, the old Barracuda, from what I can tell, is very similar to a Chubb protector, but I've never seen one. Just seen some pictures in an old brochure. Um, and they decided to modernise the Barracuda as well, so they made the trucks modular, they put the beautiful rounded front on, which I think is probably say, fair, fair to say, it's probably one of the first fire trucks, um, at least in the airport world, to have a, like a stylized rounded shape, a modern, or even at the time, futuristic shape. Um, so that was fire trucks. Fire trucks, unfortunately, went into uh, well, got into financial trouble. And the liquidators were called in, or the receivers were called in, and um, Bowton, uh, Bowton Engineering, took on fire trucks. Now, the interesting thing about um, the way they were built is that the chassis, so the wheels, engine, gearbox, um, I think the pump fitting, but I'm not sure about that. That was all done by Bowton anyway. This is what they call a, it's a, well, it's a modified version or a variant of the Griffin chassis that Bowton produced and would sell to anybody who wanted to make a fire truck. Um, the actual bodywork was conducted by Northern Counties up in Wigan. Um, now, I just assumed uh, that they just did the panel work, did, did the panel work on the cab and everything else was done at, at Bowton's. However, I spoke to a very nice gentleman uh, a couple of days ago called Mr. Porter, who was the charge hand in charge of building this very truck. And in fact, he managed all of the fire truck builds uh, in Northern Counties. And uh, he told me that really it was just a, an engine, engine gearbox and rolling chassis that turned up to them and uh, they, they did everything else. Some were fitted with tanks when they turned up, some weren't. The tanks were actually made in Devon, but I haven't found out the company that made the tanks. Um, but all of the bodywork, all of the wiring, most of the, just about all the fitting out, the whole cab, all done at Northern Counties. Um, so it's quite a, an interesting chat. Um, right now, where am I up to? How many of them are there? Um, as far as I can tell, the Marlins, there were two built for Manchester. Uh, went to Manchester Airport, stayed in the country, and they were the first two built. This one, which is the very first Marlin built, and J1 CFR. J1 CFR was also at Manchester, um, although she was sold off at a similar time to this one, and she went for an auction up in Leeds, Euro auctions, in 2017. And I've heard rumours, but I haven't been able to verify them, that it's possible she was cut up last year. Um, if anyone knows what's happened to J1 CFR, uh, or even knows if it has been cut up, where the scrapyard is, please could you tell me, because I'm hoping they've got some bits and pieces I could buy from them, in, instead of having to buy new parts for this. Um, so it'd be, if, it'd be a shame if she's been cut up, but if she has, I'd love to know where, because I'd love some parts from her. Um, after that, 
there was a V16 built that went to Hong Kong. I've um, seen pictures of this one. She looks very, very similar. Um, like uh, J1. She's got the Bowden logo instead of the Firetrucks logo on the side. Because uh, they got to that point in their life. After that, there were two more built for Hong Kong. And I believe there were two or possibly three that were built for Singapore. I don't know any details on these um, second and third for Hong Kong. What I do know is the Singapore variants were twin engined. So you had a small V8 at the back to power them and you had a, a V6 at the front to run the water pump uh, independently. Um, it was partially down to the Marlin design. They were designed to be modular and you could specify them exactly how you wanted. Uh, you could add a, a range of water tank sizes, you could add a choice of engines, um, choice of layouts, you'd have single or twin engine. The lockers on the side here, if you wanted, they could have been a foam tank instead of a locker and you could add a larger water tank. Um, as a customer, you just went to Bowton and said, I want a Marlin, I would like it configured this way, and if they could do it, they'd do it for you, from what I understand. So, uh, getting back to how many are there, the question, uh, the answer is, there were, there were seven or eight. Um, from my understanding, uh, all of them, uh, potentially, have been scrapped. Um, apart from this one. J1 is a bit of a question. There's all a question mark on all of them. I haven't seen pictures of them in the scrapyard or it's all anecdotal evidence, but it would appear they're all out of service and they've potentially all been scrapped by this one. So it could be the last survivor. No, right, so, okay, where have we got to? How far have we got so far with the restoration? When it turned up, the air system didn't hold air and it had no brakes at all. Uh, now it's got foot brakes, the handbrakes are partially working um, and to be honest other than a few minor other little bits and pieces um, most of what I've done a bit has been down to trying to work out exactly how everything works. Um, I've got some more videos that need finishing off, uh, some bits of filming finishing on some of the work we've done already. Um, but uh, an awful lot has, has been learn, learning the configuration of the truck um, because there's, there's no documents for it. I've come inside, it's just far too hot for me out there today. Um, I had intended to do more shots in different places, but the truck's parked in a funny place and at the moment it's, it's just sort of wedged in, it's quite difficult to get her out. Um, right, where are we up to? Okay, what's, its, what, what's the history on this truck? Where did it come from? Uh, where's it been what's it done well when she was built uh, in 1989 uh, she was I suppose she was the well she was the first um, and because of that she went to straight from being built in northern counties she went on the back of a low loader uh, which was pulled by a Scania I can't remember the, the model of the Scania I was told by Mr Porter and apparently it's quite a rare Scania there was only a hundred of them or so in the or built um, after <laughs> she, she left Northern Counties, she went to Birmingham to a uh, fire equipment show uh, and was there on the, the stand. Um, from there she went to trials uh, and she did, um, she went to Chobham, did some test, they did some testing there, uh, some testing on other sites, tilt testing, all that sort of thing. Uh, and I have seen some pictures, in fact, if you haven't looked at my Facebook, uh, page or the Project Marlin group, have, go follow the link to the Facebook project page, click on groups and click the Project Marlin group because a couple of the guys, uh, it's Mark and Martin, they've put some pictures up um, of this and some of the other Marlins and some Barracudas as well. Um, and some of them are in use, there's, draw, so there's a technical drawing for the Singapore trucks um, which is quite nice to see the picture of a couple of the Hong Kong trucks and there's pictures of this one literally uh, out for test before she was registered for the road uh, which is really cool to see anyway after she, the trials she went to Manchester Airport um, in 1990 while she was at Manchester Airport she was modified slightly to bring her in line with um, J1 so she had the light bar fitted to the roof which wasn't an original fitment 
uh, there were a couple of other things. Some access panels on the back have been changed slightly. The checker plate box was fitted over the foam tank filler to make it easier to use the manual controls on the uh, monitor. Uh, and there's a, a few other things. Uh, I think the crash bars were fitted because I don't believe they were fitted um, when she was brand new. Um, after she was at um, Manchester, uh, she went to Bournemouth and she was used Bournemouth. I don't know if she was used for six years or if she was there for six years. Um, I do know they used her. I know a couple of the firefighters at Bournemouth didn't particularly like the truck. Um, she, they felt she was too big for the airfield. The manoeuvrability was not good enough. And the, um, she was quite sluggish compared to the Barracudas, uh, which I, I can understand. She's quite heavy throttled, quite a delayed response on the throttle. I don't know if that's because of age and wear or if that was she was always like that um, but yeah she wasn't wasn't I don't think she was a very popular truck at Bournemouth and I believe from some pictures I've seen again on on the group um, she came out of service in 2010 which is four years earlier than I believed um, so I think she sat at Bournemouth for four years and she, then she was sold off in 2014 to a gentleman in Dorset gentleman in Dorset didn't keep her very long. He sold her within a few months to the gentleman in Lakenheath that I bought her from, um, where she went to a scrapyard as a fire suppression standby. And in that time, I don't think she did anything. Probably just sat in the corner of the yard. When I went to look at her, she had been in the yard for about 18 months and hadn't been, hadn't been moved, hadn't been run, um, from my understanding. Uh, and then obviously last year in November 2014 she came to us here um, and she's probably done more in that time than she has done in uh, the last few years. Um, we've had water pumping out of her uh, briefly because the PTO engagement doesn't work properly um, and we've driven around the yard a bit and we've got brakes working and, and a few other things. Um, so that's pretty much all her history. Going back to the Bournemouth uh, and not liking her and saying she's, she was too big. Uh, the actual stated manoeuvrability for this truck is a 27 metre turning circle. Uh, I'm not sure off the top of my head what that is in feet, but it's massive. She's got a huge, I know from driving around this yard, it, it is, you wouldn't get around, you'd have to go over many roundabouts, there's no way you'd turn around and get, be able to manoeuvre around them. Uh, she's very, very poor manoeuvrability. Um, incidentally, some of the Manchester firefighters I've spoken to that drove her quite liked her. Um, thought she was a nice truck. Uh, I suppose she had some touches that were, were special to this truck. This truck's actually got a fabric roof lining and, and door pillar linings, um, whereas all the others had the plasticised stuff that's on the back wall here. Um, but this was because it went to the show. But it was, it was done to, to look nice for the show, apparently. Um, so that's about it on the history. I suppose we want to talk about what we want to do with her. Um, so yeah, right. right. Plans for the future. There's been some suggestions uh, that an RV conversion would be quite a good idea. And I love the idea of an off-road RV. I think it'd be fantastic. But there's a couple of things with this truck that I feel would make it quite unsuitable. Um, in the UK, our roads aren't very big. This old lady is 3.1 metres wide. Uh, most articulated lorries are two, two and a half metres wide. Um, in fact, uh, a wide load is considered anything over 2.9 meters which means this requires a movement order to go on the road um, which isn't impossible to do but you can do it it would be a real pain in the bottom uh, so that's the first thing the fact she doesn't for off road uh, you couldn't go anywhere that didn't have wide open plains um, she doesn't turn well enough um, her main off-road capabilities, I don't know, she's supposed to be able to climb a very, very steep slope. She's got 30 degree uh, approach and departure angles, which I think is quite good, especially something this big. She's got quite good articulation on the axles, um, but she's heavy. 
all up she's 33 tons um, a lot of that was water so depending on the size of the tank you're looking 12 to 14 tonne of water uh, plus the weight of the foam so if you're not carrying that it reduces your weight by nearly half um, well it brings you down to 19 tonnes I suppose um, the I say depending on the water the amount of the, the size of the tank I don't know how big this tank is I was told it was 14,000 litres but in some specs I've seen for this particular truck it's listed as 12 um, when I get round to it I'll bring the tank measure over and we'll, we'll have a measure up again the tank living accommodation uh, where you are at the moment is on the engine bay so you can't use that it's all engine now from where I am here uh, to you see but the other side of this is a silver box that's the foam tank just in front of that you've got the platform so you have about three and a half four meters um, by three meters that's not that's about the size of a caravan however I'm stood on the bottom of the tank here um, the tank is not deep at all it's about one and a half meters deep the tank bottom can't go any lower so you wouldn't be able to change you couldn't go down because the gearbox actually comes up and there's a, there's a bulge in the bottom of the tank for the gearbox um, and, and the tank is entirely above the chassis so you can't drop down between the chassis um, area what you could do is go up so if you took this off you could put a portal cabin here especially if you've got rid of the deck you've got rid of the pumps and everything and, and, and the deck but that doesn't give you much more space than um, sort of a, a mid-sized camper van. It's still less space than a Win Winnebago. So that's not a lot of room really for such a big vehicle. And also you'd have to increase the height. I mean, with the monitor fitted, which you'd obviously take off, she's currently three and a half meters tall, I believe. In fact, she's with the, the lever sticking up on the monitor, she's closer to four. Um, that would be a bit too high really you, you'd off-road places you'd be even if you could get down tracks with overhanging trees you'd be hitting them uh, be hitting the top of it all the time the fuel economy um, I don't know what the fuel economy is you'd have to fit other fuel tanks no two ways about it the fuel tanks really small on this it's probably only about 300 300 liters so what would that be 300 liters would be for about 60 gallons maybe um, and she'll do about a mile to the gallon, I expect. Um, that's what I'm expecting to get out of her on the road. Um, could be worse, could be better, but one mile to the gallon seems like a, a pretty a sensible figure to go for. So that's that problem. Um, all in all, should be great fun, but pretty damn useless. So we're in the in the tank now. Um, there's the well that the pump sucks from. This is an overflow pipe here. There's a bulkhead, another bulkhead, lots of baffles. But you'll notice it's very square and it's very fiberglass. Now one of the other suggestions that the shoe was converted into a slurry tanker. Um, yeah, I'm going to come out of the tank because it's way too hot, and then we'll explain why that's not going to work. Now, I like the idea of the ingenuity of converting this to a slurry tanker. Um, I do quite like the idea of reusing things for other useful purposes. Um, but this truck's not not the sort of thing you'd want to use. I sort of I did explain in the YouTube comment to somebody. Had a bit of a conversation. Um, he was adamant that he's seen it done, and it'd be easy. <laughs> But I don't feel it would be. Um, now I'm going to explain my reasons. He might be right. Um, there might be ones out there that have been done. I haven't seen them, but I'm not completely poo-pooing the idea. I'm just putting over why. I feel that if you were going to convert this to something, that wouldn't be the thing to convert it to. The simple reason is, well, there's several simple reasons. One is, again, size and maneuverability and weight. Although she's fitted with flotation tyres and she's all-wheel drive, I really would not want to take this laden full of 
water or slurry or anything else across a field in the middle of autumn um, I think very quickly you'd be up to your axles and you'd be stuck there all winter um, the fuel economy uh, a big slow tanker on the back of a tractor won't drink as much fuel as this thing will um, <laughs> the other more technical problems I was the, the water tank is fiberglass and it's square um, if you notice on slurry tankers, vacuum tankers, anything that comes to move fluids um, using a, a pressure or a vacuum, uh, the tanks are round because round is the, the pretty much the only shape to do it. Um, being fiberglass, it would be weak. You'd have to replace it with a metal tank. You'd have to put a round tank on it, ideally, which would massively reduce your carrying capacity. Um, which would be, and you can get 14,000 litre slurry tankers um, already. The pump isn't capable of pumping solids. Um, it would last minutes. It wouldn't. It, it couldn't pump slurry or sludge, and you get rocks and stones. The only way you could do it with the original tank is to use a Molex pump. Um, Molex, I think, in the 70s, early 80s, produced a range of fiberglass slurry tankers, fairly slightly rounded but square. They're quite small. But their pump was like a metal corkscrew inside a rubber sheath that, that clamped to it and they could pump solids and they could pump um, uh, viscous fluids uh, and they, they worked really well. The trouble was as soon as your tank ran out and they ran dry they'd overheat and burn the rubber, burn the rubber out and the, so the pumps failed very very easily and very very quickly which is why they didn't catch on. Normal slurry tankers use a vacuum pump, so they suck all the air out of the tank, or a lot of the air out of the tank, to create a vacuum in it to suck fluid into the tank. And then to discharge it, they pump pressure into the tank. Um, they reverse, they pump air into the tank to pressurise it, and it forces it out. Um, this tank can't do that, quite simply. It, the tank's not designed for it. it. You wouldn't even be able to modify the tank to do that. Um, not safely, not reliably. And the third issue on this particular truck is that all of its water discharge points are at the front. So I'm stood just behind the cab. Look, this is forward. You're towards the rear. We've got a discharge point here. We've got two under the cab below us. And just down under here, we've got two more outlet points uh, for sidelines. So you'd have to pipe, piped to the back for discharge. Um, now, it's not impossible. But there's a lot back there. You've got to get around the engine, the back axle, or the battery box, um, and all the other gubbins. If it was um, a front engine vehicle and the pump was at the back, or a front engine vehicle and the pump was at the front, but you could still discharge at the back very easily. Again, maybe. But anyway, that's not that's not uh, really something I think is going to work. So I've explained to you what I'm not going to do. <laughs> I'm not going to turn it into an RV. Uh, definitely not turn it into a slurry tanker. Even if I did think it would work easily, I wouldn't be turning it into a slurry tanker. Um, I want to keep it as a fire engine. I personally think, um, although airfield firefighting is, in a way, quite an obscure branch of the fire service and firefighting, I think it's quite an important one. Um, and this is quite an unusual truck. It's the only Marlin built by fire trucks before Boughton um, took them over. It is the first Marlin built. Um, it's the first of the new generation of modular um, fire engines. It's very advanced for its time. It's the first of the rounded front fire engines or the curved front screen fire engines and it looks like it's the sole survivor of its, its um, model. So I think it deserves to be saved. Now, that leads me on to another issue, <laughs> another thing. Um, a question I've been asked is, how much do I think it's going to cost? How much is it going to cost me to restore this? Um, I don't know, is a simple answer. A lot of things are working on it um, a lot of things are salvageable on it a lot of the brake valves and things I've managed to 
um, save, rebuild, recondition, um, get working nicely. Uh, for an example, the brake cylinders cost um, just over three, about three hundred and fifty pounds plus. I'll have some import charges um, to get them. However, the seals for them are six pounds, um, and I can strip down the cylinder, rehone it, and drop a set of seals in. Um, if I add the chart cost of all that together, so you've got six. Six times six would be 24, 30, 36 pounds for the seals. Never 20 pounds for the honing stones. Um, that's that's not too bad, so that's quite cheap. There's certain things on this truck that will have to be replaced. Um, it needs four tyres, quite simply. Um, it could do with six tyres. The tyres are dependent on the manufacturer um, the original equipment Michelin's which is fitted with at the moment the two thousand pounds plus tax uh, plus VAT so 20% on top of that and that's each so we're looking what's that for a twelve thousand pounds plus twenty percent on top of that for six tires for Michelin um, there are other tires out there that I can buy it's quite an unusual size but there are other tires out there but they're still £750 plus, plus VAT and plus delivery. So it's going to take some saving up for the tyres. Um, the windscreen has to come out. Now, it's a curved windscreen. It's not something anyone's got in stock. Um, I can have one made, although I haven't had a price for it. Um, I've heard that similar windscreens being made have cost in excess of two thousand pounds and i have heard that the original windscreens for these cost over three thousand pounds back in 1989 or back in the early 90s so it is delaminating slightly in one corner but not enough to make me decide i had to change it the the windscreen's got to come out for repairs to the cab the chances of us getting a bonded windscreen out without breaking it especially one that size I would find I think there's a good chance it's going to become damaged so if it does we've got to find the money for that um, it's going to be a fortune to paint it just just the amount of sandpaper primer uh, and red paint so there's going to be quite a lot of paint involved some of the wiring needs to be replaced conduit needs to be replaced um, there's certain valves there's a valve on here that is badly corroded and, and actually fractured so that needs replacing on the water system um, it's going to be it, it could could be up upwards of fifty thousand pounds i suppose to um to restore it um I've been asked how much it cost which sort of leads into that um i don't want to tell you to be quite honest um what I will say is that it was a five figure sum. Um, you could buy quite a nice second hand car for, for what I paid for it. Um, in fact, you could buy you, you could buy an all right new car for what I paid for it. However, I think it was the low end of five figures, um, very, very near the low end of five figures. And my thoughts at the time were the engine being in good condition, the gearbox and the axles, and the amount of aluminium and stainless steel in it, um, if it came to it, if I had to dismantle it, sell the parts and um, a scrapper, then worst case scenario I could get most of my money back, um, or possibly all of my money back, I don't think I'd make anything on it. but. Uh, that really would be the last thing. If, if it gets to the point where I can't keep it, keep her anymore. So at the moment, storage costs are cheap. Um, they're potentially going to get more expensive in time. Um, the cost of restoring it is going to be quite um, a financial burden. So, worst comes to the worst, I'd try to sell her as she is, or in the however she is at the time. Um, I, the 
breaking her for spares and cutting her up would be the last resort. But I, my thought was that worst come to the worst, I would get my money back. Um, so going on from talking about money, it's been suggested that I set up a Patreon or, or some sort of crowdfunding. Um, I'm avoiding a Patreon because I don't have a huge amount of followers um, and for Patreon I'd have to be able to give something back to you and I, I, I really don't have a problem with the idea of that. At the moment I can't, I haven't got the time to make extra videos for a Patreon and I don't have the money to do free gifts. I mean we are going to, when we get time, we are going to try and get some merchandise sorted out. Um, probably some t-shirts, maybe some stickers. Uh, they'll be produced by a company and hosted and sold by a, one of these companies that, that go online and I might get some money from that. I, I probably won't though. Um, I always think they're too expensive if if I started adding on things. But it's a possibility we might be able to do that, uh, get some things made uh, that people could buy, which would be cool. That would be a bit of money coming in. Um, I could set up a crowdfunding for it. Again, I don't think it's got enough of a following. I I don't sort of like the idea of asking. It's, I chose to do this and it's my, my burden. Um, if I get to a point where I don't have any choice, it's either sell it or, or try to crowdfund it. I probably would try to crowdfund it. Um, or if I thought there was enough people out there willing to support, um, because I wouldn't want to take very much from from anybody it's not not a charity it's not owned by the public it's not owned by a charity it's this it's owned by me so it's i feel it's a bit like begging which i don't like the idea of mind you i would give money to somebody to, to do it so that's um yeah so it's a bit of a strange one there um other people sort of said oh well you're making plenty of money from youtube that'll pay for it um i don't make any money from youtube doing these YouTube videos so far has cost me probably about £500 that could have gone on the truck. And I'm doing the videos because I think the truck's quite interesting, although I'm probably making it quite a boring subject. The other side of it is you don't make money from YouTube, not unless you've got millions of followers. Um, I've got enough followers now, or well, subscribers, sorry, it's not followers, is it? I've got enough subscribers on YouTube to be able to get money from my videos. What I don't have is enough hours of video watched. So I need 4,000 subscribers. Um, no, I don't, I'm lying. I need 1,000 subscribers, which I've, there's the 1,600 of you out there that are mad enough to watch my videos and, and thank you very much. Um, but I also need 1,000 hours watched within 12 months, um, which is an awful lot especially my videos are a bit dry. Um, it's not very exciting. I'm not out driving it around. I'm not doing spectacular stunts. I'm not, it's, it's not, not a very appealing videos for a lot of people I know. Uh, some of you out there that have made it this far and are hardcore with the videos, thank you very much. Um, it does mean a lot. Um, but yeah, uh, so I, I can't make money from YouTube if I did. If I could, I'd probably make, I don't know, maybe a hundred pounds um, in 12 months uh, with the sort of figures we've got at the moment. Um, these guys that make a living from YouTube have usually got millions of, or a couple of million subscribers. Like, but it's, it's mostly gamers, gamers and kids stuff. Um, unfortunately, this doesn't fit those categories. What sort of thing I had? Uh, the only things I wanna really add, we've been, there's a lot of discussion about the floor mounted button. Um, uh, I've spoken to a couple of the guys who used to drive this truck. Um, they thought it was an exhaust brake, but weren't sure. Or it could have been an uh, engine retarder. I can't find, I can't spot anything that appears to be a retarder on the truck, and it's definitely not an exhaust brake. Um, the reason the firefighters that have driven it before thought it could be was because the other truck, uh, J1, that was at Manchester, she did have an exhaust brake. Um, it was built afterwards. It was There was some lessons learned from this truck that were implemented on that truck. Um, we're pretty certain now that that and the red button in the cab are most likely to do with the intercom and the radio system. 
Uh, the red pull handle down at the side of the seat that doesn't pull. <laughs> um, thank you very much. I can't remember the gentleman's name, um, but uh, ex a Bournemouth firefighter, in fact, uh, was kind enough to explain to me that that is actually a manual override for the PTO. So if your PTO power fails on the dashboard, you give that a good old hard yank and she'll engage the PTO. Or it would do if the cable wasn't seized up, um, like a few of the cables on the truck. So that's been brilliant. Oh, I heard a fantastic story from a, uh, a lady who was a firefighter, or was it? I think she's still a firefighter at Manchester. I'm not sure, I need to need to check up on that. Um, she said she actually learned to drive HGV in this truck. She remembers it very well. She also remembers being a uh, uh, in one of the passenger seats, heading towards the runway at a, a rate of knots, um, when the, the fire chief on board told the driver to slow down. And he said, I can't, my foot's off the accelerator. And the throttle had stuck open and they're heading for the runway. And uh, apparently they shut the engine down and shut their eyes <laughs> and hoped it was all going to be all right. And it did. It came to a stop before that. Um, I mean, I find this must have been in the mid, mid to late 90s, I suppose. This must have happened. Um, I find it quite funny that one of the problems I've had with it is a sticky throttle. Um, and it's, so it's obviously had certain problems throughout its life. It must be prone to that sort of thing. So that's been interesting to find out. Um, I think we'll wrap it up. I'm absolutely roasting. I didn't bring a drink with me because I'm stupid or run out of a drink. Um, thank you so much for watching these videos. I'm going to try and do some more. I have got a couple of bits and pieces filmed at home. Um, I've got the stuff to rebuild the light bar now. Uh, I need to get on and do that. I've got a handbrake caliper partly stripped, soaking in some diesel uh, to try and free the pins up in it. Uh, so there might be a video on that coming. If we can get that sorted, that'd be great. We can do the light bar video. Be something else you watch. Don't really want to do the light bar at the minute because that means I've got to store it uh, because it won't be going back on for quite some. That's hot. Uh, quite some time. Um, there is a partly filmed video on doing a brake cylinder. I've still got a couple of brake cylinders I want to take off and, and overhaul. They're working, but I've, if I've got the stuff to do, then I may as well get them all done. Uh, so that's on the list to do once I get around to that. Uh, I've got a video on something completely different um, that I filmed, but I think I'm going to refilm it because I got the name of it wrong continuously through the video. So there's some other things coming, hopefully coming up in the next couple of weeks. Um, yeah, thanks so much for watching. If you haven't clicked subscribe and you've made it this far, please subscribe, I need people like you. If you have clicked su subscribe, thank you so much. Uh, if you can click a like on the video, that helps, believe it or not, massively. Um, oh, if you don't like it, click dislike. Um, it's, it is a free world, but I'd rather you click like. Um, love to hear from people in the comments. Uh, if you know anything about this truck or any of the Boughton trucks, love to hear from you. Come and visit the Facebook group. Um, some really interesting stuff on there put on by other people um, if you know what's happened to J1 CFR and where it is or where the remains of it are please get in touch on the about page there's an email address there's a link to the uh, Facebook group down here in the description I, I would dearly love I would dearly love to know what's happened to that um, if somebody's got her and is trying to do her up or is in the process of restoring her, that would be amazing. I'd love to know that as well because how cool would it be at a show sometime in the next couple of years to get the two two original Manchester Marlins back together again? That would be awesome. Anyway, thanks so much for watching and uh, we'll see you next time. Cheerio.